All right, we're going to move to the public forum. Uh, those public, uh, I'm to address council on items that are on the agenda. Uh, please say your name, address, and the item that you are addressing, and the box right up there. And you'll have uh, five minutes. for or against the project. I understand there is concern that the community becoming involved at this point is premature, but there are a multitude of questions that I feel need to be addressed in the decision-making process. And it's better for these questions to be asked at the beginning, so as the process moves along, they can be considered at the proper time. Once the proper time for specific questions is passed, then the question becomes moved. I believe it is imperative that if the project is to be approved and be a success, that the community needs to be kept aware of decisions at every stage so that people do not feel they are being manipulated. People I know are very interested in researching various aspects of the project for themselves and need to have specific information available, such as what type of gasification technology <coughs> is being considered. That's just one example. The information in the news article was too general to be of much value. So I am here only to urge you to take seriously all the questions that are brought before you, to be open, honest, and specific in your uh, response as questions arise, to respect that the citizens of this city and the surrounding area have an interest in how this project will specifically impact their own lives. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joanne Hardy. I live at 5 Fairmeadow Court. I'd like to commend the EDC and the city for their work finding jobs, but I have a lot of questions about the waste energy gasification plan that's being proposed. There are mixed reports about the safety of this style of plant related to the pollutants in the air, but also the pollutants in the gas, which will be burned to turn the turbine. The fly ash that's in the gasification chamber, as well as the bottom ash, would be highly toxic with lead and mercury and cadmium. The process creates dioxin, dioxins from the heat. Will the ash be sealed in containers before it's transported to a landfill to protect the safety of the public, and especially the safety of the workers at the plant and the workers at the landfill? There are pollutants in the syngas that's produced, and while some can be filtered, there will be some emitted into the air, and disposal will be needed for whatever gets trapped in the filters. The pollutants from the process are associated with increased risks of cancer, respiratory and heart disease, and birth defects. This company does not have a track record in gasification plants. This was their first project. They only recently decided that this might be a good business to get into. The CEO, Mr. Yavorsky, has a degree in computers and specializes in IT solutions for the intelligence community and the Department of Defense. He and his company are part of the conglomerate AT Solutions, which is one of the fastest growing counterterrorism firms. They train war fighters and law enforcement, and they work with detection and disposal of IEDs, the improvised explosive devices. There's no mention of gasification or energy on the AT website. According to the Cleveland newspaper from May of this year, Cleveland is exploring building a waste to energy gasification plant. The author of the article stated that there are no trash, trash gasification plants in the United States. We have incinerators, and a lot of them, and we have gasification plants that work with just wood or just coal, and there are quite a number of those. There aren't the trash gasification plants. 
Uh, the city of Cleveland has applied for an air permit, but they are under a DNR order to reduce particulates and other air pollution, so they may not get the permit because this process produces particulates and pollution. There's a plant proposed for Green Bay, but the Wisconsin DNR has noted the technology has not been used in the United States on a commercial basis before. There are, um, we have a very efficient and well-run landfill which will last at least another 50 years and it has an excellent management and staff. There's no need to rush to do a big waste reduction project here. This plant is a solution to a problem we don't have at our landfill, which is namely space. This plant will take an emphasis off of the green advances we have made in recycling and reuse and composting, which are all better for our health than gasification. We just barely produce enough trash, trash to run the gasification plant on a five and a half day a week basis, but the plant is going to run seven days a week. If we remove the things that won't be gasified, like building waste and recyclables and concrete, they will be short of having enough trash to feed the plant. Will we have pressure to give them trash that should be recycled or composted? What else will we haul to the plant so it can operate at full capacity? The plant requires garbage at a time we're trying to reduce the garbage. It's counterintuitive. If we decide at some point down the road that we need to reduce our landfill use, we should investigate proposals from several energy companies who are presently working to develop this technology for municipal use. In the meantime, we can work on more recycling and more composting and possibly methane capture. Is this a demonstration project for creative energy systems? If the plant isn't profitable for them when they walk away, who will clean up the site? What guarantees do we have? It's an unproven and possibly dangerous technology being run by a company with no history or experience. I think the item related to the plant should be removed from the agenda tonight <clears throat> until the public is given more information about the facility and we have more information about the company and assurances about the safety of the process. I suggest that the landfill board should address this before the city does. Thank you, Mary. Hi, Carol Patno, 306 9th Street Northwest. And I just want you all to know I do serve on the Environmental Commission here in town, but I'm here as a citizen, not as a member of that commission. Um, first thing I want you all to know is that I do support new business coming into this area. That's why I voted for some of you who are sitting up there. Um, I understand that we need jobs, and I support bringing business into the community, but the concerns I have about creating <coughs> energy systems are related to the health problems. Um, that incinerating or gasifying the waste will potentially have on the people in this community and the people in the surrounding communities. I did some research this last week and found numerous sources, not just one or two, um, that talked about the toxin emissions from the gasification process. Um, because that's the one that I paid special attention to because that's the one that's, that's, that you seem to be, you know, wanting to bring in the community. Five products of gasification include some of the things that have already been mentioned, but let me just mention two of the big ones. Um, dioxins. Dioxins are a potential potent carcinogen, which means they cause <coughs> cancer, and they also cause birth defects. Dioxins are a byproduct of um, gasification of waste material. Mercury is another one of the um, components or byproducts that I'm concerned about, and mercury is a known neurotoxin, which means it either um, damages nerve cells or it destroys them. Even in small amounts, the two that I've just talked about can, can potentially have a huge impact on the health. There's also a list of other pollutants that I'm not going to go into. There's also the uh, possibility of small particles just being emitted into the air. And people can breathe those in, and those can also mess or cause problems um, with their lungs. It's also my understanding that the byproducts that are produced depend on the temperature of the process, the amount of time that the waste is actually being processed, and also the actual content of the product itself. 
So that means that the levels of these byproducts that I just mentioned would vary. I read in the globe that the Iowa DNR will monitor the facility, and I'm glad that they're going to monitor the facility. But regulations and monitoring do not ensure safety. Standards regarding an acceptable level of these toxins is difficult to determine because we often don't know what levels are safe or even if there is a safe level. We do know for sure that they can impact human health. We just don't know how much of an exposure it takes to impact human health. One other thing that we know for sure, we know that even a tiny exposure to a fetus, a an infant or a child, um, can be very damaging to them. Their um, brains are not completely developed. Their immune systems are not strong enough to deal with the toxins that might uh, potentially get into their system. So they are just more vulnerable than the rest of us are. And as a grandparent, I have to tell you, that's a big area of my concern. What will you do to protect the health of this community, as well as the surrounding communities, from the toxins that I just mentioned? Tonight you're voting on whether to commit to this company. And yet there appears to be little information gathering that has occurred, although I am certainly glad that you all ask questions tonight. But I think the information gathering needs to occur over a long period of time. And I, and I, and I don't get sort of this whole process and why this hasn't been, why these questions weren't asked earlier, but let me kind of explain how I thought about this. A couple of months ago, my air conditioner went out. I called in a couple of different companies and I got some bids for replacing the air, my air conditioner. I asked them questions. I talked to some people who had, had recently had problems with their air conditioner, asked them, you know, how did they make the decision between replacing it and fixing it. I researched information I got on the internet. I gathered a lot of data and then I made my decision about what was best for me to do. And, and that's the process. From looking from the outside, that isn't, doesn't look like that's what's happened here, and that concerns me also, because it seems to me that you're putting the cart before the horse, so to speak. So what I'm asking you for tonight, based on everything that I've talked about, is that you just take take your time, that you examine all aspects of this potential business, um, everything that it could possibly do to this environment, and then make your decision. I get that we need more jobs, and you do have a responsibility as the council and representatives of the city to provide more jobs to this community. But you also have a responsibility to be considerate and thoughtful with this decision, especially when it has the potential to create health concerns in people's lives. So that's what I'm asking for you to do is not to make a commitment tonight, to gather more information, to make that information public to all the interested parties um, and facilitate a discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stacey Lancaster, 230 South Louisiana Avenue, Mississippi City. Should we tell Mr. Flores? You know, I've hit the websites a few times. My understanding is, Mayor, that I need to address my questions to you. Um, and hopefully somebody can answer them. If not you, maybe Mr. Flores. If you're you can more answer. than welcome to, uh, to put a few questions out. They can write them down and then council can ask them. But public forum is not an exchange. Awesome. Okay. So um, most of the questions actually are Mr. Flores, and hopefully they can write them down and you can answer later. Um, my understanding is, is that the process is oxygen starved and um, you're calling it gasification. In looking at some stuff on, uh, on the website, uh, it says gasification actually is an oxygen enriched environment and that paralysis is actually uh, an oxygen starved environment. So I'm just wondering technically what, um, what that is and if it's paralysis at what temperature that will actually be fired at. Um, you're talking about 250 to 300 tons. Um, I'm wondering if you're looking at expansion, if you're planning on being here for 30 years, hopefully, and um, where that expansion will come from. Hopefully we will gather more garbage here, because we'll have more people. Um, but wondering if you plan on taking garbage from other areas, not hazardous waste, but other garbage. Um, I'm also wondering, blue collar, what is the description of blue collar um, positions? What will that involve directly, as well as the white collar? And I'm also wondering, especially for administration, Will you hire within this area, or will you have to transfer people um, in order to lead that, um, at least maybe even initially? You talked about extending the life of the landfill. I'm wondering um, exactly what that number is and what we're looking at, um, if that's beyond what it is today. And I'm also wondering what type of oil is being processed and what you're actually burning. 
um, in that last stage if there's a particular name to that. Um, okay. And then I'm also wondering what EPA standards specifically apply to your business. So um, what areas specifically are being covered? So if we can get answers to that, that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Yes. Hi, I'm Maxine Brinkman, 7 Woodline Road, Mason City. I, I think I'm going last, and a lot of my questions are, a lot of points have already been brought up. I'm very supportive of new businesses paying good wages located in Mason City. Because I'm particularly interested in green technology, I've spent a good deal of time this last week learning more about waste to energy technology. In addition to internet research, I've had the opportunity to visit the several national leaders in gasification. As you may know, gasification is a very general term ranging from converting matter to gas by everything by simple incineration to very sophisticated plasma arc conversion. As we all know, and everybody here has already discussed, the burning of any matter creates byproducts and all levels of waste create specific byproducts, many of which are toxic and hazardous to the environment. One of my questions is, has this company does, done any field testing? And if so, what are the results of their field testing? And does the council have the results of field testing? Or will Mason City provide the field testing? Will Mason City serve as a test site? Also, from where do we receive waste? It certainly will take a great deal more waste than we produce to make this company profitable. And do we need more waste brought to North Iowa? I'd also like to know who is actually funding creating energy systems. As we know, AT Solutions, which is I call the parent company, I don't know if that's exactly the right um, way to describe them, but they are connected with Creative Energy Solutions. And that company um, provides for one of their <coughs> jobs to provide disposal for anti-terrorism products. And actually, they have a contract with the Navy to dispose of anti-terrorism products. Is anybody connected with this company supporting this particular new um, venture and will any of those products from anti-terrorism come to our new bill? I don't know, can we guarantee that? Um, is there a spreadsheet analysis showing the cost, the revenues, and the capitals of this? Has anybody seen it? And will this information be available? <coughs> I think that making a decision for this company is different than making decisions for other companies that are coming here. It's different because we all know so little about this emerging industry. In fact, our entire country is learning about gasification. Several industry leaders suggested that I visit with Charlie Kress, spokesperson for Waste Not Iowa, a nonprofit Iowa corporation formed by civic leaders to study alternative technologies for treatment of solid waste. I have information from them available to the council that I'll give to them later. It lists their mission, the list of, corporate, of the corporation's members, and they're all volunteers, and questions they proposed for me to be submitted to the council. I feel that we all have a great deal to learn before we move forward on this issue. It should not be left to the landfill, the zoning, or Iowa DNR. I think as persons responsible for our community, we should all have more information in order to make a good and informed decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Willett. I'm Tom Willett from Mason City, Rural Mason City, 10485 Willard Avenue, Rural Mason City. Um, I'm also a business manager. Labor's International Union of North America, Local 340. I too am pleased to see they bring jobs to the area. But uh, well, I'll read what I wrote down. Contrary to belief, labor isn't only concerned with concerned with dues-paying members. We try to look out for all working people, organized or not. This is not limited to wages and benefits, but also safety and health on and off the job 
for working people and their families. We believe in quality of life for everyone, not just the 10% who hold 90% of the wealth. Representing construction workers, we're always interested in building new facilities. But this project comes with issues, questions, and concerns. Some of them have been addressed. What will happen to the 11 landfill employees who do have good jobs with good wages and good benefits? I'm confused about, you said something about $30,000. Is that when they're farmed out to your facility, $30,000 is going to cover all 11 of them? They're all under Excuse me? I mean, keep going with your comments, but this is not an interchange with... with well, okay, family. that's one of the questions I have, sir, is are they going to be made whole, I guess is the way to put it, for what they do with their, their current wages and benefits, or if they're, when they are farmed out, so to speak, to your facility, do they work for the, if you figure that out, $27,000 a year, and I don't know, you're working seven days a week, I was figuring at a 40 hour a week that comes out to about 12, between 12 and 13 dollars an hour. We need jobs in this area, but we need good jobs. The federal government considers a poverty line for family of four at $22,113 per year. That was $27,000 a year. That's only about $5,000 above the poverty line. We need some good jobs in this town. The council made a good move, good intended effort to uh, give property tax breaks when you build a new house for the first five years. But as Mr. Marshall pointed out, I remember when it was being discussed, if interest rates at four and a quarter percent aren't incentive enough for somebody to build a new house, there's another problem. The problem is people don't have enough money. They're not gonna get a loan at $27,000 a year to build a new house. They're not gonna buy a new Harley from the Miner Brothers or from the Honda shop or the Har uh, the Kamaha shop. That's not, in my opinion, a good wage or a good job. You mentioned the smell. What are these people going to be exposed to? They're going to be ripping open bags, not to ripping open bags of garbage, apparently. But uh, what else in this trash? I mean, there's hypodermic needles. You're going to have huge diapers. You're going to be exposed to what? <coughs> Possibly hepatitis, HIV, salmonella, listeria. How are they going to be protected is one of my questions. Uh, hazmat suits, respirators, I would hope. But I'm, I'm happy to see that we're bringing jobs to the area. For $520 a week, when you take out state and federal income tax, payroll taxes, FICA, Social Security, I'm estimating this, I believe, high, that they're going to net somewhere, you know, that's $520 a week gross, $27,000 a year, they're going to net about $400 a week. $50 a week for gas to get back and forth to work and incidentals at home. I'm thinking this is low, but $60 for utilities a week. Uh, then you've got to have a phone. Then they're housing. We're going to leave these people to live on about $150, maybe down to it when you got car insurance and you mentioned benefits. Is this going to be company provided health insurance or they? pay to include your family in the plan. Most of those are about $40, $60 a week. You're leaving them with about $110 a week. I don't see that as a boost to our local economy. I don't see that as an asset. No offense, sir. I'm for green energy and all. $62,000 for the white collar job, $27,000 for the guy who's wallowing in the garbage. I think that gap ought to be closed up, maybe 50 and 40 and health insurance provider. I mean, we have a lot of minimum wage, poverty level jobs in this community. They're not boosting the economy. These folks aren't gonna rent a room down at the right on the park when they got $110 a week to live on. I, I, I appreciate that people are working hard to bring some jobs here. We need good jobs. But I'd also like to talk to you about who's gonna build the facility we are good. Mr. Willen, time expired. Thank you, sir. More ways than one. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
that we need jobs here, and I'm happy that we have people working hard to get jobs, more jobs here. But again, I, I've been reading and meeting with a, a group of curious and concerned citizens of Mason City regarding the Globe Gazette press releases about the Energy Systems Project. And I wanted to learn more about it, and I have to say I was pretty disappointed in the amount of information I could find out about it. Uh, Google, and uh, I went uh, to AT Solutions, and I could get a lot more information about that. And as we talked about earlier, um, it was primarily uh, IED, uh, Disposal, or EOD disposals, and uh, primarily the Department of the Navy um, type disposal is all I could find out that had anything to do with waste. And that isn't the type of waste we're talking about in Mason City. Also, I looked at some other energy groups, and the populations that were really um, starting things up were high populations. I looked at one group that really impressed me on their website. They seem to be a very transparent company. They even have their emissions um, right on the site and their reports. It was called Plasco Energy Group out of Ottawa, Canada. But Ottawa is a population of 812,000. And uh, that company has been, um, I guess the Slime Valley in California uh, has accepted them to try to to get something going there, but again, that's a huge population. So I put all this information together and wondered why Mason City, uh, why our, um, our waste facility, um, especially when it does work well, and uh, it's, as you said, it's one of the best ones in the state. So um, these are some questions that came up and. Uh, I'm curious, we need more information. Thank you. Thank you. My name is George Anderson, I'm the mayor of North Springs, and I just have a couple things I'd like to uh, ask. I thought at the landfill meeting that we were told there were a few working plants, why don't we have some information from those plants throughout the country no matter what size they are, as to what they do with their waste and what happens, uh, so we know what we're in for. Nothing's been presented to us about that. And if the one in Alexandria is using 250,000 tons a day or whatever, similar to the one you proposed to put up, I thought there weren't any. You were the first one. That doesn't make sense. And there are 87 others, as Mr. Flores said, in the United States. Let's hear some input from them and how they like it, what they do with their uh, waste and stuff like that. And who guarantees Utah will always take our toxic waste? I would think after a while they'd be tired of taking the garbage from all the country. That's all I have. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Cram. I'm Randy Cram. I'm president of uh, the North Isle Corridor Economic Development Corporation. And uh, as most of you know, we're a nonprofit corporation uh, run by a volunteer board. And our mission is to bring projects in front of our communities in the county um, for discussion and consideration. Our goal is to create opportunity and jobs in North Iowa. And I would encourage um, you to start the process. That's all it is, is start it. I, there's been some excellent questions that all need to be answered. And that's what we do as a community, is do the due diligence and make sure that those questions are answered. Um, our mission is to bring these forward so we can all think about them intelligently and make great decisions. Um, so I would certainly encourage you to pass the resolution. You know, when I look at other projects that come forward, the ethanol plant, uh, all of us had a lot of concerns about emissions and everything. 
I think that's been a very successful project for us. I don't know that I've heard any complaints uh, from citizens about that. I know this is a little different process, but certainly we're smart people and everybody that want a great research and we can get through this and make great decisions. Um, I think the cement plant uh, burns tires right now, if I'm correct. Somebody can, um, they don't burn anyone. Okay. Um, but anyway, I, I just think uh, there's a lot of smart people on the DNR and they have to meet EPA regulations. We got a lot of smart people here and I just encourage that we start the process. If we don't start it tonight, we can't really delve into it and, and really look at it and see if it's right for our community. Thanks for considering that. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Steiner, welcome back. I'm Vicki Snyder from Ken Winter Garden Lake in Clear Lake. And, um, we have a uh, new center construction in Clear Lake, and we've had the opportunity to visit with this company, just have some initial conversations about their design and things. And I can tell you that they're extremely concerned about not only meeting, but exceeding all the regulatory requirements of the DNR and, and all the agencies that would um, have oversight of this company. So I would encourage you to let those agencies do their job and uh, oversee this company and, and uh, with their regulations and things. I have very, a lot of confidence in them. Uh, I would hope that you would embrace new business and uh, look at the opportunity of bringing some new jobs to this community. Uh, they are privately funded. They. Um, um, are only asking to move forward and bring this to a community forum and to a public input. That's the only next step that they're asking us to do while they do their due diligence and um, the community does, community does their due diligence. There are no risks in asking and voting in moving forward. So I would just encourage you to do that to move forward to a public forum. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Barney Ruder from Forest City, Iowa, and I'm uh, executive chairman of the uh, Landfill Board. And I'd like to make two, two or three clarifying statements. Number one, I was reported that the landfill tipping fee was $35 a ton. It's $30. Um, they say there's going to be no public money, but the $5 a ton that is going to be given to these people to run that is your money. And it's money that's being paid to the landfill for an operation, and that's public money. There's a 28 degree of all these cities, so that is public money. The other thing that I'm looking at is lost jobs. You have a great recycling center here in Mason City. We have a contract with them for city to pick up the recycling. They do a great job. Are those guys going to have a job five years from now? Is that plant going to be open? So, you know, you have questions to answer. As far as the guys at the landfill, they're gonna have to weigh everything that comes in yet. They have to cover that. They're gonna have to follow rules. Um, they have daily operations. And so, I don't think you can eliminate very many of any jobs out there. But, you know, I, I think I wanna clarify the public money, the recycling, as I run the city for cities for recycling and garbage, I know that I'm not going to renew a contract three years from now because I'll put it all in the garbage and make one trip and not pay somebody else to pick it up. So those are things you need to look at along with the pollution of it. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Reardon. Good evening. My name is David Diner and I'm the owner and manager of Absolute Waste, a local hauler here in Mason City, a local garbage hauler. And my main concern as a local hauler is if if a tipping fee goes up, if a tipping fee goes up, there's going to be a reflection on every customer. The cost is going to be there. So I mean if we're talking what Barney was talking about, five dollar difference, uh, or whatever, I know it's a $30 tipping fee out of the landfill. It's one of the lowest tipping fees in the state of Iowa, if anybody's done their research. And there is one lady that's done 
a lot of research right there. But what I'm saying is it's going to be a reflection on everything. Again, David was absolutely nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on.